Hey, welcome to JSN Backcountry Snowmobiling. Today I'm going to show you how I check my belt deflection and clean up my primary clutch. So this is my 22 Chaos Matrix Slash. So the sled has almost 500 miles on it, still on the original belt. So we're going to check it for wear and clean up the clutches. Hey, I got a question for you. Stick around to the end of the video, answer a question for me, and put it in the comments below. Up for off. So I'm looking at my belt. It might be running a little lower, so we'll adjust that up today. Here's another little tip. This new Matrix chassis, the way they redesigned the plastics, they have a design flaw here. When the sled's idling, this tool for spreading the sheaves on your secondary clutch will fall down and it'll actually drop right out of this little holder. I've already lost one. So luckily I had a spare from my old sled and I just put a twist tie on it and it keeps it in place. So today I'm gonna take the belt off we're gonna check it for wear. I'm gonna look at its overall width and compare it to my spare belt. I'm also gonna look at the bushings. I'm gonna use an air compressor and shoot some air in there and try to clean out any dust. I'm gonna clean up the primary clutch, take a look at the secondary too, see if it needs any cleaning. Let's take the belt off. So you can roll the clutch to where you want it so that it's out of the way of this plastic. I'm also gonna make sure that the key's off and the kill switch is off just so I don't fire this thing up on accident. So you can see the belt is dropped down in the secondary clutch. Here's the used belt. I'm gonna compare it to the new belt. Here's the new belt and it's a little holder. The fiber there is still brand new. So this is the new belt and this is the one that has 500 miles on it. Just out of curiosity, I wanted to see if the width had changed at all. So this is the new belt. I'm gonna go inside the groove here. So I measured multiple spots on the new belt and the old belt. And for the most part, they're right on 35 millimeters. So no change over 500 miles in the overall width. This is a Polaris P85 primary. Does it look inside? If the belt starts to get too worn, there'll be a space between the two sheaves on the primary and it'll have to spin up a little bit before it grabs onto the belt and that's going to raise your engagement RPM. Looking inside here at this is the roller and that's the weight. So those are moving parts. I'm going to just try to get in there with my air gun and blow some of that belt dust out of there. You can take this part off to get better access for your spring, if you wanted to change it out or if you wanted to change your weights. If you do take it off though, you'll see there's a mark here, this X, and it lines up with another X right there in the back. And it's important that you put it back on the way it came off. It looks like some material was taken off here when they balanced the clutch at the factory. So I have the owner's manual here. And if you go to the page on clutching, it says the bushings in the weights and rollers of Polaris clutches are made of a material that may be damaged if lubricated. Do not lubricate clutch bushings. We're just gonna clean them out with some compressed air. I'm gonna use some soapy water and a Scotch-Brite pad, clean up any of the glazing that might be on those surfaces. Fire up the old generator. I'm just gonna blow it out with some air, safety glasses, and I would do this outside because it can get a little dusty. These are the scotch bright pads I'm going to use. They're non-scratch scour pads. That with a little bit of soapy water should do the trick. I'll go in there with some paper towel after too and clean them up a bit further. Just checking out my secondary clutch too and it actually looks pretty good. Barely needs to clean at all. It's a little dish soap and my scotch bright pad. Here we go, cleanup time. Okay, time to put the belt back on. So gotta remember when you're putting the belt back on that you should be able to read the writing. Here it says Polaris. It should look like that. Kind of roll the primary bit. Just gotta make sure that the kill switch is off so you don't start the sled up on accident while your hands are in there. It can be a little bit of a struggle getting the belt off, especially if you haven't changed the belt very many times. But one little tip that I have is make sure the track is off the ground. And then that way you can roll the secondary to get the belt on and off. So I got just a couple milk crates here. The track is right off the ground. 
I'll show you how easy it is to roll the belt on. You start at the top like this, and you just start rolling the clutch. And it's actually just putting it on just like that. And let's say you were trying to get your belt off, do the same thing. Lift it off at the top and keep going. And this will pull it off. Just like that. Hey, check out my last video where I show you how to adjust the track tension and alignment. In order to do that, you need to get your sled off the ground. With the Matrix Slash, it's a little challenging because it has a fender that sticks out the back, so I used a step ladder. You can see that video by clicking the link up here. Okay, let's put it back on and then I'm gonna adjust it. Let's get my clutch tools out of my tunnel bag. Keep them in the top here. Just my little climb tool pouch. You're gonna need a 7 16 wrench and a 1 8 Allen key. So I have my wrench on the lock nut and my Allen key in the adjuster screw. My belt was running a little low, so that means that my sheaves are too spread apart. This adjuster screw sets how far those sheaves are apart. And so since mine are too far apart already, I gotta come out a little bit on that adjuster screw. Whatever you do, don't just start cranking on this Allen key. You'll just strip it out. Make sure you loosen off that lock nut first. So loosen off the lock nut first. That wasn't very tight. So the belt was too low, which means the sheaves were too far apart. So I have to come out a little bit with this adjuster screw. I'm gonna do a half turn and that's it. Hold the Allen key in place while I do this part. Lock it back up. Take the little tool out. All right, I'm just gonna run the track a little bit and see where that belt's sitting. So after spinning the track a bit, you can see that the little grooves, the bottom of them are just flush with the top of the secondary. The belt still has a little bit of play in it. I can, I can still move it a little bit in there. And when it was idling, the track wasn't spinning and there was no squealing. So I'd say that's adjusted pretty good. Here's Fergus the foreman helping me out. Doing a good job as usual. Do me a favor and hit that like button, subscribe and share it with your buddies. That'll help this video reach other people who might also find it helpful. So my question for you is how tight do you like to run your belt? Do you like it to squeal just a little bit or not at all? Throw your answer in the comments below. Thanks for joining me on another episode and we'll see you in the next video. Hey, check out my video on how I grease the skid of my sled in the back of my truck. That video can be found right down here. Okay, time to go into my tunnel bag to get my clutch tools. Fergus the foreman, doing a good job.